This is a super skating clinic run by students from our local middle school. <laughs> I'll tell you what, how about you just take a couple turns without me and I'll learn by studying your form. Are you sure? I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> we're all operating at different levels because we're all different. Now, when it comes to understanding our differences, often that means understanding world religions. About 900 million people around the world practice the Hindu religious tradition. Hinduism is really made up of a number of different traditions, and it includes a wide variety of practices and beliefs. Hindus can be found in many parts of the world. More than 80% of the people living in India are Hindu. Hindus also live in the surrounding countries of Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, and Nepal. Emigrants from these countries have brought Hinduism all over the world. Hinduism is one of the world's oldest religious traditions. More than 4,000 years ago, there was a great civilization living in the Indus River Valley. Exactly who these people were and many of the details about how they lived are still something of a mystery. But we know they built great cities with brick houses, paved streets, even a city sewer system. Historians also believe that this valley began to draw settlers from other lands and that eventually the civilization of the great cities broke into fragments. Out of this ancient mix of different people and cultures came a collection of religious beliefs. The people worshipped spiritual forces they believed were in control of what they saw in nature. Things like fire and rain, life and death. Those ancient religious beliefs developed into the tradition now known as Hinduism. And the tradition of Hinduism has been interwoven with the social and political life of the people throughout the history of this region. Ancient Hindu teachings divided people into four classes or varnas, a social hierarchy that evolved into the modern social structure known as the caste system. A Hindu will usually marry a person from the same caste or jati, a group that tends to have a common occupational background, language, diet, and religious belief system. Many modern Hindus criticize the caste system, yet it remains influential in India today. Many people interpret the Hindu teachings differently and believe they must improve their present life as well as work toward a better future. But the influence of the ancient Varnas still plays a major role in the social interactions of many Hindus. One of the earliest of the Hindu teachings says that there are many paths to reach the truth, or God. Hindus don't believe in God as a single being, but more like a supreme essence. And they believe that there is more than one way to believe in God. Despite this diversity of thought, there are a few core beliefs that almost all Hindus hold in common. A few of the most important are the belief that God can be thought of in many different ways, and the belief in a cycle of birth, life, death, and rebirth. Understanding these beliefs is a good starting place for understanding Hinduism. Many Hindus believe that everything is part of a divine unity or God called Brahman. It's very hard to understand something as vast as Brahman. That is why Hindus think of Brahman in many different forms so they can recognize and worship aspects of God. Vishnu sustains and preserves all that is in the universe. Shiva has the power to destroy and recreate the universe. Brahman is also worshipped in many other forms as the gods and goddesses or deities who bring good luck, who control the weather, who give inspiration to artists and musicians. In most temples, um, there's Ganesha, and um, I like him a lot because he's the destroyer of obstacles. And um, like when you're really sad, you can pray to Ganesha because sadness is also an obstacle. Most Hindus usually wear a marking on their foreheads. Girls and women wear a dot or bindi. 
During worship, men and boys wear lines called tilak, drawn with clay or sandalwood paste. These markings symbolize good luck and protective energy of the Supreme. I put the Nama, which is the white mark, the U mark that you see, and the Sri Churna, the red mark, on his forehead. And usually before we say our prayers, we have to have a mark on our forehead because it symbolizes that a temple cannot be bare. So just to signify the presence of a temple and a place of worship in everybody, we adore our foreheads. The substance I use is a form of clay and it is from earth and it just kind of reminds us that we are all from earth and we go back to earth and we have to be humble all the time in life. Plants, animals and all things in the world are part of Brahman and are sacred too. Some animals are especially sacred. The cow is a symbol of life and goodness. Hindus receive sustenance from her milk so they generally do not kill the cow or eat beef. Some Hindus don't eat any meat at all out of respect for all animals. Nature is an important part of Hindu worship too. Ancient trees can often be found near the temple and Hindus honor them as the givers of life and shelter. To Hindus, all rivers are sacred. Water means life, renewal and hope. The most sacred of rivers is the Ganges. Hindus believe its water can wash away illness and sin, so they make pilgrimages to bathe in the Ganges. And when Hindus die, their families prefer to scatter their ashes in the Ganges. But for Hindus, death is not an end or a beginning. It's part of a great cycle. My name is Pavitra. Hindus believe the soul is eternal and everlasting. The human body is like a piece of clothing the soul discards when a person dies. That's how some teachers think our Hindu ancestors recognize samsara, the cycle of life, death, and rebirth that we're all a part of. Rebirth in a new and different body is reincarnation. All the things we do during a lifetime add something to the soul that will be reborn. And that something our soul carries is karma. Karma is the effect of all our thoughts and actions, good and bad. Karma affects our place in the cycle of death and rebirth. If our karma is bad, we can be reborn in a lesser life, perhaps not even as a human being. But if your karma is good, and you keep working at it through many lifetimes, you can eventually leave the cycle behind, and that means reaching moksha. Moksha is freedom from samsara. It is when we are no longer part of the cycle of life, death, and rebirth, but have become one with Brahma. So, with Hinduism, we're talking about a tradition that has worshipped many different forms of Brahman, going back many thousands of years. You'd expect to find some remarkable places of worship in a tradition that old, with that many faces. And you'd be right. Before going inside the temple, Hindus take off their shoes and wash their feet. Many temples have faucets or bathing tanks for Hindus to clean and purify themselves before they pray. As soon as they are inside, Hindus ring a bell to announce their presence. Hindus visit the temple or mandir throughout the day to pray, sing, make offerings, and listen to teachings. Temples are considered sacred. Hindus believe temples are the earthly dwelling places of the gods who are all different forms of Brahman. So they treat the statues inside like living beings. This temple is dedicated to Ganesha. Ganesha has a head of an elephant and a human form. He represents universality of creation. Many temples are dedicated to one or other forms of Brahman. There is often a large statue of the god and smaller statues of gods and goddesses in the shrine room. Here only a priest can perform the activities of worship or prayer called puja. Puja is a way to show respect for Brahman. The customs of puja are different everywhere. In this temple, a priest wakes the god in the morning and Ganesha is bathed and dressed. 
Daily routines become acts of devotion and love when performed for Brahman. Food is offered, and once it has been blessed, it is shared among those who are present. Hindus also make offerings of flowers and incense. Hindus walk in a path around the shrine because it is an important part of showing respect. There's often a shrine for the god's transportation or vehicle, which is usually some kind of animal. Towers are built above the shrines for protection. These towers are meant to remind Hindus of mountains and symbolize hope and ambition. Temples are not the only places Hindus worship. Most Hindus, like Vinayak and his family, have a shrine in their home. This is our family shrine where we worship several deities. We purify ourselves and ring a bell before prayers. This is where we perform puja, pray and recite from Hindu sacred writings. We light an oil lamp and wave it in front of the deities. We burn incense to show respect and strengthen our connection with Brahman. When we pray at the temple or at home, we always begin by saying Om. Our sacred writings teach that this was the first of all sounds, and out of this beginning all the rest of the universe was created. We've been seeing how for all their many differences, most people who practice Hinduism share some common beliefs and practices. The same thing is true for Hinduism's sacred writings. For thousands of years, the sacred writings have been recited and written down in Sanskrit, one of the oldest known written languages. Oldest of all are the Vedas. Hindus believe that these ancient texts were revealed to wise sages who memorized them. The Upanishads are the last part of the Vedic revelation where Hindus first read of reincarnation and the cycles of rebirth. The sacred writings best known by the greatest number of Hindus are stories. They are the myths, legends, and epics about great heroes. These exciting and entertaining stories have been handed down for hundreds of generations, teaching lessons about how the Hindu life should be lived. Parvati, Pallavi, and Pavitra learn ancient Hindu stories and lessons through traditional dance. It's a way to connect with our culture, even though we're so far away from it. And sometimes at the end of class, the teachers kind of sit you down and they kind of explain, you know, each um, hand movement and why it's significant to the story. There are two great epics in the Hindu tradition. The Mahabharata is one of the longest poems in the world, telling stories about gods, goddesses, heroes, and avatars. An avatar is really the spirit of Vishnu in human form. This is the conch shell that he holds in his left hand, then the discus, which is used to, which is his weapon, and this is just his general like pose. And there's a very famous part of the Mahabharata about one of the most famous of all the avatars. It's the part we call the Song of God, the Bhagavad Gita. It's the night before a great battle and one of the soldiers is very sad. His name is Arjun. Andrad wonders if he's really doing the right thing, killing his enemies and wondering what's the point of it all. His chariot driver, Krishna, explains to the soldier how important it is for all of us to do our duty in life, but to do it for the good of others, not for selfish reasons. Before the night is over, Arjun realizes that Krishna, the charioteer, is really an avatar, the god of Vishnu in human form. The story of Krishna is a story showing that all of us have a place in this world and also that the universal spirit loves all human beings. I personally think it's more interesting to learn it through dance because it's more exciting than reading through a book or something and you get to act it out which is the best part. There is another great epic, the Ramayana. It is about Rama who was the best of all kings, and about Sita, the example for all women, who becomes Rama's queen. That's a story that's being told in words, retold in pictures, movies, and dances. Rama loves and marries Sita, but she's kidnapped by a demon. Rama searches the world for her with many battles and many adventures, 
And all the while, Sita must resist the demon king and remain true to who she really is, even when she has no hope of ever escaping from him. But she never surrenders, and Rama never gives up. Finally, he kills the demon king and is reunited with Sita. Rama and Sita both teach us to be brave, not to quit when things are very difficult. They just keep fighting to do the right things. And those are some very good lessons to pass along. Hinduism has produced at least one modern leader who is every bit as heroic as the heroes of its great epics. Mohandas Gandhi used the practice of non-violence to win freedom for his people. Born in India in 1869, Gandhi is regarded as one of the greatest political and spiritual leaders of the 20th century. Gandhi is also known as Mahatma or Great Soul. Gandhi was a Hindu who sought the truth through tolerance and concern for others. He developed a method of non-violent protest to promote social change and he encouraged people to refuse to obey unjust laws. Gandhi worked for decades in South Africa to end racial discrimination against Indians there. But he may be best known as the leader of the movement to free the people of India from British rule, a movement that finally succeeded when India gained its independence in 1947. Gandhi taught tolerance toward all people. He campaigned for better treatment of the people trapped at the bottom of India's social life. He risked his own life by preaching tolerance among different religious traditions within India. Gandhi's message of tolerance enraged some religious and political extremists. Because of that anger, Gandhi was assassinated in 1948. He was mourned by people around the world and remains today a powerful influence on people of many different faiths in many countries. The Hindu tradition has clearly had a big impact on the life and history of India and its people, especially with the ritual traditions that go along with childhood and family. Parvati and Vinayak celebrate being sister and brother in this tradition. Every year in July or August, there is one special day when we honor our siblings and celebrate a tradition called Raksha Pandan. It means bond of protection. A rakhi is the color bracelet that the sister ties around the wrist of their brother. The bracelets are a sign of commitment. A brother must protect his sister no matter what. When the time comes for my sister to be married, our parents will welcome her new husband into our family. The wedding ceremony is the most important sacrament in our lives, and the ceremony itself can go on for days. After singing songs of blessing, the right hands of the bride and groom are bound together with yellow cotton thread, and as water is sprinkled over both of them. The final step in the ceremony is really seven steps that the bride and groom must take together, saying a different vow for each step, for food, strength, prosperity, children, happy seasons, harmony in the marriage, and friendship. Along with its rituals, the Hindu tradition is rich in festivals and holy days. But with so many different Hindu beliefs, it's not surprising that there are lots of different holidays. One of the most widely celebrated holidays is also one of the most joyous. Shamala and her family celebrate Diwali. Diwali is a festival of lights that lasts for several days. This is a Hindu celebration of our new year in October or November. During Diwali, we get up before sunrise, bathe, and dress in brand new clothes. People light small lamps and leave them on their window sills. They string millions of lights through the city and float candles down the rivers. As the sun goes down on the darkest night of the month, we light oil lamps and place them around the house. During Diwali, we perform puja in honor of Lakshmi, the goddess of wealth and good fortune. She is a form of the universal spirit we are celebrating. We light lamps to help the goddess Lakshmi find her way so she can bring us good fortune. We also light the lamps to remember the story of Rama and Sita. After defeating the demon king who kidnapped Sita, the two of them return home on the night of the new moon. 
and there was a great celebration. And the Ramayana says, because nights are dark during the new moon, Rama's people light lamps to guide him home. Some people decorate their doorways with white or colored powder and draw beautiful designs. This welcomes Lakshmi and our other guests. During the holidays, we enjoy a variety of traditional Indian dishes like samosas, malai kofta, idlis, yogurt salad, pickles, and sweets like laddu or gulab jamun. Another holiday celebrated by almost all the different branches of the Hindu tradition is Holi, the return of spring. Hindus remember the early life of Krishna, avatar of Vishnu, who loved playing practical jokes. People splash colored water and powder on each other to celebrate the start of spring and the joy of life. Hinduism is one name covering many different beliefs among many different people. But we've been able to focus on what those different people have in common. It's worth taking the same approach when it comes to looking at all the world's different religions and its different people. When we work together and try to understand our differences, we often find out about what we have in common.